So, let's now proceed to the next topic entitled Asian Regionalism. But first, let's find out what Asia and the region are. What is Asia? Asia is the biggest continent in the world, making up around 30% of the planet's surface, with nearly 60% of the world population. It is also the continent with the highest population. Pinakamalaking kontinente ang Asia na may 48 countries. Sabi rito, sumasaklaw sa humigit kumulang na 30% ng lupain sa mundo. Ito rin ang pinakamataong kontinente na may humigit kumulang din na 60% ng kabuang populasyon sa mundo. And China also the most populated country in the world. Let's take a look at the picture. Yan. Obviously, mas malawak at mas malaki po ang Asia, yung light green, kesa sa ibang kontinente sa mundo. Ang mga bansa na kabilang sa Asia ay ang Thailand, Japan, Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Brunei, Kuwait, Uzbekistan, Mongolia, Malaysia, Yemen, Nepal, Pakistan, at syempre ang ating bansa, Philippines, at iba pa. So, let's proceed to the next one. So, what is Region. Regions are merely geographic areas that have a similar characteristics. It is also an area or division, especially one that is a uh, part of a nation or the world and has distinguishable qualities but not usually set borders. Sabi rito, Ang rehiyon daw ay isang geographic areas na kung saan may katulad na katangian. Those similar characteristics can be physical, natural, human, or cultural. Ito rin daw ay isang lugar o division lalo na sa isang bahagi ng bansa o ng mundo. Halimbawa o kabilang rito ay ang North America, Caribbean, Sub-Saharan, Africa, South Asia, East Asia, and Oceania. What is Asian regionalism? Asian regionalism is the product economic interaction, not political planning, as a result of successful outward-oriented growth in strategies. Asian economies have grown not only richer, but also closer together. Asian regionalism may pagtutulungan ng bawat bansa sa isa't isa para mapaunlad ang ekonomiya ng mundo. Good day everyone! Again, I'm Alona Cortez and for the continuation of our report regarding Asian regionalism, I will tackle about how Asian economies are connected. Let's look back on what is Asia. Do you still remember how many Asian countries are there in 2022? Asia is home to over half the world's population. It produces three-tenths of global output in terms of purchasing power and consistently records the world's highest economic growth rates. But what is purchasing power? Purchasing power is the financial ability to buy products and services or the value of a sum of money or in Tagalog, kakayahan sa pagbili. Paano ito nakakaapekto? Nakakaapekto ito mula sa pagbili natin ng goods hanggang sa pagbili ng in investor ng stock. Kapag ang purchasing power ay mababa dahil sa mataas na mga bilihin, 
magkakaroon ito ng negatibong epekto sa ating ekonomiya. For our next slide, Asian economies are increasingly connected through different factors. One of them is trade or kalakalan. In Asia, particularly important in such trade were fine textiles, silk, gold and other metals, various precious and or semi-precious stones, spices, and some aromatic products. Ito yung mga produktong karaniwan natin binibenta sa pakikipagkalakalan. Next is financial transactions. Example nito is between Asian Development Bank or ADB. Asian Development Bank is committed to achieving a prosperous, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable Asia and the Pacific. While sustaining its efforts to eradicate extreme poverty, it assists its members and partners by providing loans, technical assistance, grants and equity, investment to promote social and economic development. Third is direct investment o pamumuhunan. The Asia-Pacific region maintained its position as the largest source of global foreign direct investments, outflows since 2018. Developing countries in the region accounted for 77% of all outflows in 2020. Ang, pamumuhan, ang pamumuhunan ay maaring sa pamamagitan ng istruktura, kagamitan at mga organisasyon ng bansa. Port is technology. Asia also manufactures more than 50% of the world's automobiles produces 75% of its robots, and provides 50% of global high-technology exports. Halimbawa ng mga produktong gawa sa Asia ay, halimbawa sa mga sasakyan is Toyota, galing Japan, Hyundai ng South Korea, Bibo sa China, Samsung ng South Korea. Next natin is labor. Unemployment and, and underemployment are developing Asia's most important problems. On conservative estimate, the region is home to about 500 million workers who are either underemployed or unemployed. Therefore, helping people as workers is critical for poverty reduction. Lalo na po ngayong pandemya, marami sa mga manggagawa ang nawalan ng trabaho. Although ang Asia ay kilala bilang pinagkukunan ng mga skilled workers. And lastly is the tourism outflows. Dahil sa nangyaring pandemya na nararamdaman ng buong mundo, isa ang turismo sa pinaka naapektuhan. Tourism has been one of the hardest hit sectors by the pandemic fueled by extensive international travel restrictions and the fear of infections. One promising approach to re reopening borders for tourism is instituting travel bubbles or green lanes. Ano ba yung travel bubbles? It's a bilateral agreement between government to allow for business and or leisure travel according to agreed health protocols. China and several countries in Southeast Asia and the Pacific have been particularly successful in fighting the pandemic. They have become low risk, which makes them natural partners to form travel bubbles. What is Asian regionalism? Asian regionalism is the product of economic interaction and political planning. As a result of successful outward-oriented growth strategies, Asian economies have grown not only in richer but also closer together. The purpose of regionalism is to moderate the behavior of the states in some way, to make trade and investment between the neighboring countries, and to build communications. Asian, Asian countries had to do more to support themselves. The trade agenda, which had dominated the second period of Asian regionalism, was overtaken by the new emphasis on financial cooperation. The main result here was a shift from Asia-Pacific regionalism to one more focused on East Asia itself. The importance of the Asian regionalism 
regionalism encouraged local governments to pool resources, talents, and effort. Collaborating in this way creates more effective planning that all governments, both big and small, can participate in. It can also create a larger budget to deliver a stronger results. So, this is the continuation of what makes the world third nation. No self-consumption of natural resources. It means, mahina tayo mag-consume ng natural resources na pwede sana natin magamit para magkaroon ng profit o kita para mas mapaayos sumutolago ang ekonomiya. Example, mayaman tayo sa mga puno. Pwede tayong kumuha ng papel, magkaroon ng kahoy, paggawa ng mga furniture. Pero dahil mabagal o mababa tayo makonsume, hindi natin sila nagagamit ng maayos. Next is, vulnerable to exploitation by large corporations, industrial, and nation. Ito naman ay yung pagsasamantala ng mga malalaking kompanya or corporation sa bansa. Initake advantage nila yung kahinaan ng isang bansa o kaya hindi ito muunlad sarili lang nila yung isip nila example sa isang kumpanya pinagtatrabaho nila yung mga manggagawa, manggagawa ng sobra-sobra sa working hours niya pero yung kita hindi pa rin nadaragdagan Lumalagay, lumalago yung company pero yung mga tauhan ang mas nahihirapan next less technological advancement So, it means ang mga third world countries ay mabagal mag-progress when it comes to technology. For example, yung bansang Burundi na matatagpuan sa East Africa. Kung tayo, mga naka-smartphones, iPhones na, pero sila, mga dikipad pa rin yung gamit din ng cellphone, yung mga detainment, yung mga Nokia, ganun. Next is, economics are independent on the developed countries. Dahil si developed countries ay mas angat, mas advanced, at mas stable, di ka to the third world, maraming pangangailangan at nahihirap maging independent. Dahil marami silang kailangan, nahihirapan silang tumayo sa rin nila mga paa. Di ka to the developed countries na stable na, di na nila kailangan ng tulong ng iba pa. Next one, high fertility rates. So, ayun ulit balik tayo sa Burundi. Dahil sa napanood ko, karamihan sa mga family nang doon, maraming mga anak. Like, eight children, tapos yung tatay nila unemployed pa. Tapos yung trabaho is parang nangangalakan lang. Walang is, wala siyang is stable job. Next is high gender illiteracy. So, sinage ko yung meaning ng illiteracy. Means, lack of knowledge in a particular subject. So, ibig sabihin, they are lacking in understanding sa importansya ng pagkakaroon ng pantay-pantay na pagtanggap sa lipunan. For example, dinidiscriminate nila yung mga kakayahan ng babae kasi daw may hino sila at di kakayanin ang trabaho ng mga kalalakitan. Next one is lack of middle class. So, alam naman natin ang pinakamataas ay si upper class. Dahil na they are lacking of middle class, Ibig sabihin, mga natitira mamayan ay may hirap na. For example, kung 20% ng mi, ng, sa isang mamayan ay middle class, then the 80% na remaining ay may hirap na. So, it means mas lamang pa rin yung mga may hirap sa bansa. Sunod ay, there is huge impoverished population. Poverty and impoverished is not the same. Pero, hindi naman sila nalalayo ng meaning. Yung impoverished ay mas grabe yung as in sobrang hirap ng isang bansa. Extreme kumbaga. Like yung mga tao ay unemployed at walang maayos na tirahan at, pag, at madalas ang pagkagutom. And lastly, a small elite upper class that controls the country wealth and resources. Sila naman yung mayayaman na inaangkin o binibili yung mga business or ari-arian ng mga mamamayan. Tulad na lang ng in-example ni Sonya na ang face-to-face classes natin, yung prime water na dati pagmamaari ng mga mamamayan ngayon ay binibinan ng mga bilyar para sa sarili nilang kapakanan. Benefits of Regionalism in Asia A dynamic and outward-looking Asian regionalism could bring huge benefits not just to Asia, 
but to the world. It could help sustain the region's growth, underpin its stability, and with the right policies, reduce inequality. What is regionalism and why is it important? Regionalism concept encourages municipalities to look beyond their boundaries and recognize that working together towards the betterment of an entire area will ultimately prove beneficial to each locality within it. What are the benefits of regionalism? Regionalism encourages local governments to pull resources, talent, and efforts. Collaborating in this way creates more effective planning that all governments, both big and small, can participate in. It also creates a larger budget to deliver stronger results. There are positive and negative effects of regionalism. Positive. Regionalism has positive impact on competition and market expansion due to the effect of declining costs leading to the existing supply of cheaper goods. While in negative, it can have but any deflection trade when originally cheaper foreign imports are replaced by more expensive domestic production. Benefits of Asian regionalism in the Philippines Lower cost living, improved job opportunities and general well-being, less hassle and traveling, and Philippines prosperity. Different Asian groups and associations. Isa sa mga example nun is ang ASEAN. ASEAN means Association of Southeast Asian Nations. It is a regional grouping that aims to promote economic and security among its members. Ang mga group members ng ASEAN ay Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, syempre nandiyan tayo, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Dito sa next slide, may kita nyo naman guys, yung iba't ibang countries. Eh, may kita nyo Philippines, and yung iba pang Asian countries. Regionalization versus globalization. The difference between globalization and regionalization is that globalization refers to international integration arising from the interchange of worldview, products, and ideas and other aspects such as technology. And regionalization is the division of an area into smaller segments called regions. Globalization affects economic, political processes at the global level, but regionalization involves first of all consideration of various events and needs of specific areas of the country. Which is better, regionalization and globalization? What is the relationship between regionalism and globalization? Regionalism is emerging today as a potent force in the processes of globalization. If globalization is regarded as the compression of the temporal and spatial aspects of social relations, then regionalism may be understood as but one component or chapter of globalization. Major differences between regionalization and globalization. Regionalization. It is the process of dividing an area into smaller segments called region. Example, division of nation into states or provinces. Business also use regionalization as management tool. While globalization, it is the process of international integration arising from the interchange of worldviews, products, ideas, and other aspects such as technology. Makikita sa Venn diagram ang pagkakaiba at pagkakapareho ng globalization at regionalization. Globalization, global integration of international trade of investment technology and culture, more promotion of culture, and foreign direct investment. Regionalization, regional integration of countries that divided into areas called segments, less promotion of culture, promote domestic product. At ang pagkakapareho naman ay, they both aims for economic growth and movement of economic integration. Thank you for listening.